If you couldn't already tell, I'm currently 16 and I'm currently studying psychology. And no, I'm not a psychologist, I'm just an ordinary girl. But what we have been studying quite a bit about is conformity and the issues that go along with it. And many of you may be looking at this word thinking, I have no idea what that is. And that's completely fine. In fact, a majority of the population don't even know the simple definition for something that we do every single day of our lives. If you open your dusty English dictionary and you find conformity, you'll see that conformity means compliance with rules, standards, or laws. To put that in psychological terms, the likelihood of converging to a group norm, to put that in English, the desire to be just like the person next to you, the desire to be like everyone else in the room, just not being different. In December of last year, I came across a pretty disgusting example of someone who couldn't resist conformity much longer. Joshua Ryan Alcorn, who was only 17 years old when he died. Um, Joshua Ryan Alcorn was, believed that he was a girl trapped within a boy's body. If many of you haven't heard what this is called, it's a common case of someone who is transgender, who is someone that doesn't feel comfortable with the gender that they were born with, and they'll do anything and everything that they can to change it just so that they can be happy and they could be the person that they believed that they were born to be and the person that they believed they were meant to be. When Joshua was 16, he asked his mother if he could possibly get some kind of surgery to become more like a woman when he gets older, possibly taking estrogen to grow more female parts and just to be happy. And his mother responded with absolutely not and instead decided to send him to Christian conversion therapy. Shocking, isn't it? In fact, his parents were very religious, which is, explains a lot why he said that, why they said that. When their biological son had died, Carla Wood Alcorn, Joshua's mother, posted a status on Facebook, which I found, and I quote, saying, My sweet 16-year-old son, Joshua Ryan Alcorn, went home to heaven this morning. He was out for an early morning walk and was hit by a truck. Thank you for the messages and kindness and concern you have sent our way. Please continue to keep us in your prayers. In fact, when we see this, I, I saw it and I said, okay, this is true. He was hit by a truck, but it wasn't an accident. In fact, when I was scrolling on the social media site Tumblr, I was actually following Joshua Alcorn and I found that he had posted his suicide note saying that he didn't want to live in the world anymore, and I quote, because he was transgender. In fact, a survey found by informative news source The Guardian found that 46% of transgender people under the age of 26 had attempted suicide. 30% had attempted to kill themselves in the past year, and 59% had at least considered taking their own life. When, they, when we look at these numbers, it's quite shocking. May I remind you guys, only under the age of 26, possibly haven't even had their own family yet or even fallen in love yet. It's very shocking. And why, is it peop the reason why would people rather die than be who they are? But the issues of conformity go far past transgender suicides. I mean, um, conformity was such a great area of interest for psychologists since the 1950s because the Cold War was going on between communist Russia and the Western world. If you stood up and you said you were a communist, you were called a witch and you were executed for that. People were so afraid to stand up and say that they were a communist. Um, a psychologist by the name of Adorno came up with something called the authoritarian personality. The authoritarian personality is someone who's likely to be very prejudiced against minority groups, anyone who is Jewish, anyone who is black, anyone that was homosexual, transgender, simply because they had a harsh disciplinarian upbringing. So because your parents were very harsh and they didn't like Jewish people, you possibly would not like Jewish people. For example, Hitler. Hitler was someone who trained thousands and thousands of Nazis to kill over billions of Jews during the Holocaust from 1939. And I sometimes ask myself, what if the Holocaust didn't happen? And what if authoritarian personalities didn't exist, like Hitler? And if people, and all of the Nazis who killed thousands and thousands of Jews and the other Jews conformed and they didn't stand up and say, I feel immoral about killing another Jew. They just simply conformed because they didn't want to be different. Now I could ask any person in this room how they're doing today and they would say, I'm fine, simply because it's so instinctive for human beings these days. We're like robots. 
hi, how are you? I'm fine. When in reality, your breakfast wasn't so good this morning or on the way here, your car broke down. Everyone has conformed every single day of their lives and you don't even realize that you're doing it. In grade five math class, when you were 100% sure that two plus two was five and then the teacher said, yes, Jimmy, that's correct. Two plus two is four. And you nodded like that was the answer you had in your head the entire time because you didn't want to look like you were stupid. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Everyone has done this once in their lives, including me. This is a rather well, unattractive photo of me having participated with two other students in a DART scholarship program in 2013. And maybe you, many of you may be asking, what does that have to do with conformity? I don't get it. It seems like an achievement. And it was, trust me, it was. But I did not want people to know that I participated in that. I didn't want anyone to know that I participated in that or I was involved in that. Because every, every, everyone in my class already thought I was a geek. They already thought I was a nerd. I didn't want anyone to know that I was obsessed with academia and I was obsessed with books. I didn't want anyone to know. I loved books. I was obsessed with them, OK? I wasn't like the other kids in my class. While well, all of them were going out to parties and if everyone knows what team jam was, that was a thing. And you know, listening to rap music and stuff like that. I was listening to punk rock, dyeing my hair dark, wearing way too much eyeliner. Mom, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and also while all the kids were laughing and having fun on the field in school, I was in the girls' locker room reading The Hunger Games. Great trilogy, if you haven't read it, you should go buy it. Um, <laughs> um, anyways, but you know, I wasn't the only kid like that. In fact, I knew many kids in my year who had something that they felt that they shouldn't share and they were completely different and they didn't want to express themselves. But I, and I wasn't the only kid like that. I mean, I am still a kid and I'm sure there's going to be many more situations where I'm going to have to conform again and again and again. And before I die, I want to see a world where people aren't afraid to stand out. I wish that Joshua Alcorn was able to walk the streets of Kings Mills, Ohio without being called a freak or a faggot or a queer or anything else of that nature. And if you like books, scream from the rooftops that you like books. And if you want to be an astronaut after you retire, save up to buy a spaceship because being who you truly are is the best person that you can ever be. Trust me, I know, I know. I've changed the way I think so much. And I hope you guys are left with the message that just who you are in here and up here is the best person you can be. And it doesn't matter what the person next to you thinks, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, just be who you truly are. Because every single person in this room is a part of society and it's up to us to fix it. Thank you.